Good evening, or good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Zlatan Spike Fix. Thank you for joining me again. Today, we're going to do a recap of UFC Vegas 70, Krylov versus Span. Uh, we'll do a quick recap, and then in a couple days, we'll put out the next video for UFC 285, um, Gone versus Jones. But we'll do the recap now. We'll go over what went right and what went wrong. I got to admit, though, it was an exciting night, just the way the fights were formed. We made three mistakes, three wrong picks out of the 11. But the way the fights went along, I was getting very excited because the earlier fights that were less predictable were the fights that were, were hitting. So usually when that happens, those are the tougher fights to pick. And usually you get a much bigger payout since it's such a longer parlay. So I was getting very excited. I was thinking, okay, well, on my next show, if this all hits, I'm going to have a big rake. I think I mentioned it last time. A big rake for leaves and say we're going to rake in the money, right? Well, it didn't quite happen because as the night went on, a couple of fights didn't come through. Fights that we were very, well, I was very sure of that would come through. So I did bring a rake because we did win a couple of fights, individual fights, not very much. This is the rake. That's it. It's not a big rake. It's a very tiny rake. It's a, it's a toy rake. It's not real. Pretty much how it happened that night. But we'll go over the fights and then we'll go over the board and we'll check things out. Um, just going in the same order as I did on last time. Joe Selecki versus Carl Deaton. We had a high probability on this one. Joe Selecki. And yeah, it was fairly easy. Joe Selecki on the ground. Took him to the ground. Controlled him on the ground and eventually submitted him. It was a high confidence pick. And it came through. Uh, Josie Johnson, Garrett Arnfield, that fight was canceled. Um, Haley Cowan versus Aylan Perez, that fight was canceled. Uh, Rafael Alves, Nurulo Aliyev. We had had a slight, well, I had had slightest of leans toward Rafael Alves. Just because I know how explosive he is and I was thinking that he, I didn't think he was going to get submitted. I didn't think he was going to get finished. I didn't think he was going to get ground and pounded. He's too tough for that. He's too durable. He's too crafty on the ground. But I had thought that he could stay on the, on the feet long enough, possibly to get a knockout. And uh, it was, it was a, it was, it was a close fight. Actually, it wasn't, it wasn't a blowout. But Rafael Alves couldn't get the knockout, and of course, Nerullo got him to the ground, and he managed to build up some control time, and he won the decision. So that one didn't quite work out. You know, I was iffy on that. I mean, Nerullo is the better wrestler. He is, he should win the fight. He was heavily favored to win the fight, or decently favored. But I was thinking Rafael Alves would be the guy to possibly knock this guy out, because he's a really explosive type of fighter. Next fight. Um, that was our first mistake. It was really early on, so it was in the it was in the very 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 iffy far legs. So that one going wrong did not make a difference to us. Not a huge difference, anyways, because in that same leg of fifty plus, the Aileen Perez fight was there. Aileen Perez was picked on that one, and she had her fight canceled. So. So that one didn't work out. So the 50 plus percent was the farthest pick, was the farthest leg from our parlay. So that one not going right didn't hurt us. Um, next fight, Ode Osborne, Charles Johnson. Uh, I picked Ode Osborne. Ode Osborne won a decision. It was a very close fight. Um, didn't even quite go the way I thought it would go, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, uh, it, it, Ode Osborne did squeak it by, and it was it was a low probability pick. Picked Ode Osborne. I think Charles Johnson took it on short notice. Charles Johnson really impressed me; like he did really well. 
the fight was really close. So now you know where the level of Charles Johnson is. So the next time he fights somebody, you know, it's, he was a big question mark. But now that he's got a few fights in the UFC, we kind of see where he sits in the, in the pile. But Ode Osborne was the pick. It was a 51%. That was the next level uh, uh, from the 50 plus percent. So we were correct on that. Uh, next fight, Jordan Levitt uh, versus Victor Martinez. Victor Martinez is the new guy to this, um, you know, a lot of punches, powerful punches. And it was a pick em fight between Jordan Levitt and Victor Martinez. But I really, I had a, I had a decent amount of faith that Jordan Levitt, like fairly confident that Jordan Levitt was going to win. And Jordan Levitt did win. He dominated the guy and he, you know, he's an awkward fighter. He, he has strikes and they're awkward. The kicks are awkward. Everything's awkward, but it does land. So he managed to close the distance, get the guy to the ground and, you know, eventually submitted him. Jordan Levitt is a good grappler. Um, that was a high confidence pick. It was really good odds. We picked Jordan Levitt. It was a, it was a pick em, basically, even odds. Jordan Levitt did win. Osborne, which was, by the way, the fight before, he was actually an underdog. So we picked him and he won. And he was an underdog. So, um, next fight, uh, Jasmine J Jasa de Vakis. I knew, I'm usually better at these names. Jasmine Jasu de Vakis. Okay, there you go. Versus Gabriela Fernandez. Gabriela Fernandez was a fairly confident pick for me. Um, you know, looking at her tape, she was solid, strong, good fighter. And she's, because she was fighting in the lower leagues, she was an absolute monster to everyone else. So I thought maybe she was going to be bringing that monsterness out into the UFC. She did not, but she was very powerful and she was very strong. She had good strikes. And um, in the lower leagues, she fought off her back. She got sometimes a little too comfortable with the jiu-jitsu. She's not too bad at jiu-jitsu, but she was getting up. Um, the reason why I was picking this fight, I actually picked Gabriella. It was a slight favorite because uh, Jasmine was five foot seven. And she fights basically because she's so much taller than everybody else. Kicks them at range and then gets them up against the fence and kind of gets them on the ground. And she's the bigger girl and kind of just grounds and pounds them or gets them up a cage and, you know, clinch control and pounds them. So I thought Gabriela Fernandez was powerful enough to avoid this. Now, the, like, I saw the weigh-ins and uh, I was actually a little disappointed at the weigh-ins because Gabriela Fernandez is, they say is five foot six. Jasmine Jessa Davikius is five foot seven. There was no way there was a one inch discrepancy there was a three inch height discrepancy against Gabriella Gabriella was much shorter than Jasmine she wasn't a little bit shorter she was visibly shorter I don't know who's does the measuring but there was a definite size difference height difference um, at that point I'm like Ooh, well my theory is it became iffy, <laughs> like, you know, big girl fighting small girls wins, big girl fighting another big girl, you know, she can't use her advantages. But she was still the much bigger girl, like taller, you know, overall bigger, but uh, Gabriella was more powerful. She's much more powerfully built, very, very muscular. But yeah, and uh, sure enough, Jasmine, you know, got her at range, eventually closed the distance, got her in the clinch and got her on the ground and Gabriella lost. <laughs> so it was a decision, but nevertheless, she lost, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was kind of disappointing, especially because I thought uh, uh, we're, we're, we've been misled. Definitely these heights and these reaches, these reaches that they stipulate are very iffy. I mean, and uh, from what I've seen is they're not really reliable and that's a shame. But, you, you know, I mean, if she had fought in the UFC, we'd probably kind of gauge it and see it. But, you know, she's new to the UFC and she, it's hard to tell who she's fighting and, you know, it's all relative. But that one didn't work out. That's the biggest disappointment because up to that point, we had hit like 
one, two, three, four, five fights because I think I didn't, well, I, I'm pretty sure she fought after Malat and Selecki. So we are five fights winning, you know, hitting our legs. And then all of a sudden she comes in and she loses. And that ruined everything. I thought that was the worst fight, but then Moon has lost, so it didn't matter. <laughs> but uh, I was kind of ticked off. Next fight. Uh, Eric Gonzalez, Trevor Peak. We had a 50-50 on this. If you pick the parlays, you can either avoid this fight or pick each of them. I picked each of them. And pick, uh, Trevor Peak ended up knocking him out in the first round. Right at the last second, to tell you the truth. Four minutes and 59 seconds. He unloaded on Eric Gonzalez. And it was a back and forth fight. It was really competitive. Um, you know, if it gone into the second round, it was hard to tell how Trevor Peak was going to respond. Because as he goes on, he gets, he gets a little more tired. Even though he... He goes all out. He does definitely take a step back. He's not as powerful, not as dangerous, but he is an exciting guy to watch. It was a lot of fun. Next fight, Mike Malat versus Johan Lanese. We picked Mike Malat, fairly high degree of confidence, and Mike Malat definitely took him, uh, took him down. And you know, I had I had predicted that this was going to be Mike Malat was nobody was talking about how good. How, how good his submissions were, especially his chokes and stuff. And sure enough, that's how he won. And he beat uh, Leonese, the two Canadian guys. So so Mike Malat won fairly easily on the ground. Good submission. Uh, next fight, Tatiana Suarez, Montana De La Rosa. A uh, high degree probability picked Tatiana Suarez. Definitely dominated the fight. Uh, Montana De La Rosa made a good accounting for herself. You know, she wasn't just a pushover. Um, but I guess that's got something to do with the, the fact that Tatiana Suarez was fighting at 125, where she usually fights at 115. Now she was actually fighting against a bigger girl. But uh, she won as expected. But uh, definitely De La, Montana De La Rosa wasn't pushed over. Uh, we picked Suarez, of course. Uh, next fight, Augusto Sakai versus Dante Mays. Augusto Sakai was a slight uh, favorite. A lot of people were paying, picking Dontel Mays, um, you know, because he was a bigger guy and he'd won a couple fights. But, you know, if you ever look at the fights he won, I mean, who did he really beat? And uh, there was a lot of questions I had about Dontel Mays. And, I, and, you know, I picked Augusta Sakai and I, I didn't think Dontel Mays, I just didn't think he had fought the caliber of people that Augusta Sakai. And Augusta Sakai was on a four fight losing streak and everyone's like, oh, this guy's done. But I mean, he's still big, he's still powerful, he's still strong, he's still got a lot of uh, experience, and uh, he dominated Dante Mays. So, you know, it was, uh, it was a fairly easy decision, so that was correct. Uh, now, Andre Muniz versus Brendan Allen. Wow. I had Andre Muniz as a fairly high confidence pick, and Brendan Allen definitely has improved his fight. Like, this guy... I mean, you don't even know who's, who Brendan Allen is. Sometimes he's supposed to win fights. He comes in, he loses, or he does terrible, and then he's supposed to lose, and he comes in and he looks great. Well, this one, he looked great. And I got to admit, though, it was his skill in scrambling that won the whole thing. Because overall, the fight striking was fairly even. Apart from a really good shot that he landed on Muniz that kind of staggered him, the harder shots were hit were, were landed by Andre Muniz. So he was out striking in the power sense. But in the second round, Andre Muniz took at Brendan Allen down, which was where I thought this was going to be over, where we were going to win on points. And in the momentum of Muniz landing on top of Brendan Allen, Brendan had the scrambling ability of using the momentum, falling on the ground and rolling on top of Muniz. And Muniz was not able to get him off. So the rest of the round played out like that where Muniz is getting pounded on the ground. Well, not too too bad. He didn't take a lot of pounding because he's continually moving around. He's good off his back. He's great jiu-jitsu. But that won, that won uh, Brendan Allen the round. So the next round, Muniz comes out, starts punching, starts hitting, and start. he was winning the round. And then he took Brendan Allen down. And he mounted Brendan Allen. And I thought, okay, well, now he can win... The first round was really close. I thought Muniz still might probably took it. Um, and somehow Brendan Allen 
managed to sweep and reverse him. So Muniz was in full mount and Brendan Allen swept him and got on top. And once he got on top, again, Muniz couldn't get him off. So good on Brendan Allen. He did great, but the fight was very close. You know, you know, one, one scramble less from Brendan Allen and one better scramble from Muniz. Because basically whoever got the top position was, was not coming off, except for Brent, uh, Muniz, which took the mount. And the mount's kind of a tricky spot. You're on mount, but it, you're not very stable. And, you know, it didn't work out for us. And I was kind of disappointed, I'll tell you that much. And uh, up to that point, I was disappointed in Gabriela Fernandez because she had lost. But then at this point, it didn't matter because he was even a higher confidence pick. And of course, Nikita Krylov and Ryan Span was cancelled that main event. So we'll just go over the board. Let's do this. Where's my stick? All right, so yeah, pretty much this was like the first fight and we had picked both, so we peak one. I checked his name off, but it didn't matter because I had picked both of them. The 50% here is where, you know, it didn't matter because it was like 50 plus percent that we knew it was gonna be close. Alves, you know, ended up losing that fight in the decision. Um, Perez, they, that fight got canceled. So when that happened, no big deal. But then the 51%, the Krylov fight got canceled. Osborne won. He was a uh, slight favorite, or he, he was the underdog. Sakai was the slightest of favorites. He won. Osborne won. Sakai won. So as we were going along through the night, then we went to the 52%. Jose Johnson, that fight was canceled. Levitt, he won. That was a uh, even fight. So it was like minus 110, minus 110. So I thought, oh, this is looking great. But Fernandez fight I didn't see happen till later. So Malat came in. Malat won, and he was a he was a favorite, not a super big favorite, but a decent favorite. Seleski was a big favorite. So then Malat won. Seleski won. I thought, you know what? This is looking great, because these ones I was fairly high confidence in. I said, okay, this this girl and this girl, nah, it didn't work out. <laughs> so we were on a roll for a while <laughs> and then she ruined it and then I thought you know what no problem we'll get these ones I, I can't believe this guy lost you know and uh, disappointed in him and impressed with Brendan Allen but man that Brendan Allen's so up and down you just don't know who's gonna show up but he is improving um, yeah it was it was kind of a weird fight but nevertheless you know um, when he's lost and Suarez, of course, won. So it didn't quite work out just because of the way where everything had fallen for the losses. You know, if he had won, we would have made, you know, our money back. She had won, we would have made a lot of money. But it didn't quite work out. But let's do this for this week, which is going to be a huge fight, huge main event. It's going to be a lot of fights. That's, okay. That's good because there's so many fights that always seem to get, look, this fight got canceled, this fight got canceled, this fight got canceled, three fights got canceled. So, so this, other, this other card coming out on Saturday is going to be big. And as fights can't, get canceled, it's not going to be as bad. So on the bet money line, we actually broke even on it. Um, Suarez, we said uh, decision, uh, no action. So she won, we won that bet. We ended up losing that bet. Fernandez, no, it got pushed because it was a decision. Seleski, we ended up winning that bet. Levitt, we ended up won that bet. This one didn't happen. Perez didn't happen. Alves, it didn't uh, count because it went to a decision. So overall, we broke even, to tell you the truth, um, for how much, because it was uh, the money we lost that one and the three compensated for it. So yeah. It was going so well, you know, we got these check marks, got the check marks, got the check marks, and bang. And then bang. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so next in two days, we'll have the fight for UFC 285, Jones versus Gone. It's really exciting. I, I've gone through halfway through it. I'm just do, looking at some more tape for some fighters that I haven't seen before. There's a few new guys, guys that have one fight in the UFC, a couple of new, couple brand new guys that are coming off the Dana White Contender Series that look pretty good. Um, yeah, it's going to be some good fights. You know, I'll feed you guys all the information in a couple of days. And hopefully we'll just nail this one. One of these times is going to get the big one is going to get nailed, and that'll uh, make up the difference for a lot of months. So, thank you very much for joining me again. We'll see you and talk to you in a few days.